Hey yo, this is Dash. Yeah. yeah. Hey yo, this is Dash, and today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about how I got started doing barbecue. So it seems like you guys are always interested on how I started, or how I got into doing barbecue. And I've told this story before, but I figure I'll put it in a separate video, therefore it'll be easy to find. So, I got my love where I, I started doing barbecue. I was always the guy that was always at the grill. I was. Um, I never had a problem using a grill. I always had a grill as far as as soon as I moved out, you know, my parents' house, my mom's house, when my now wife and I moved in together, when we were able to, actually when we bought a house, we one of the first things I bought was a, uh, was a grill, and I've been on the grill almost ever since. I used my grill all year round. I've always used my grill all year round. Uh, I've never been one of these people to only cook during the summer or from May until October. Hell no. Grill food is good all year round, and if you're standing close enough to the grill, you won't be cold. But how I got my love specifically for smoked meats was I went to Texas. I went to Texas on a work trip, and my coworkers told me as soon as we get off the plane, we're gonna do two things. First thing, we're gonna get our rental car. Second thing, we're gonna go get lunch. We went to go get lunch at a place called Rudy's. If you don't know what Rudy's is, Rudy's is a gas station that serves barbecue. And it's damn good barbecue, that's for sure. I go into Rudy's and they tell me, you need to order the extra moist or the moist brisket. I get the moist brisket and when I say it changed my life, I would never had something so delicious. And then, when I got back to Baltimore from being in Austin now, I was in Austin, Texas, so it wasn't just Rudy's that I went into. Gosh. It wasn't just Rudy's that I went to. There were other places in and around Austin that I had great barbecue at. And unfortunately, when I was out in Austin the last time, Aaron Franklin had just been starting to set up his business on the side of the road. And I do not believe he had his uh, actual uh, Franklin's barbecue spot just yet, in case you were wondering. Now, <clears throat> Once I had Rudy's, like I said, I couldn't get it back in Baltimore, so I tried to do it myself. I found brisket, okay? What I later found out were just brisket flats. Then I tried to cook them. I tried to cook them on my grill. On that square grill or that rectangular grill that I have. And when I say, I f actually I tried to cook them on the kettle, kettle grill, uh, Weber kettle, failed miserably. I got the bigger grill, and then I tried to cook them on the bigger grill, like with indirect heat still failed miserably. There was a time or two where I had something that was edible, but for the first maybe three or four years, I was consistently getting it wrong more times than I was getting it right. But that didn't deter me. I kept trying, kept trying, kept trying, and my wife actually bought me a little bullet smoker. That little bullet smoker was like 50 bucks from Walmart, and I was able to get a brisket that came out okay in the bullet smoker. That was another year, year and some change of me trying every few weekends to get it right. My wife was pretty tired of eating burnt up brisket and I can't tell you how many soups I made from brisket that did not turn out correctly. Now, fast forward another year or so, I saw something that said that you can make a smoker out of a 55 gallon steel drum. I took those plans and I said, all right, well, I need to find a steel drum. I went on Craigslist, I found the steel drum, and I went and picked it up in the back seat of my Jetta, the mistress, you guys see it right now in, in the background of some of my videos in the garage. I went and picked up that, that drum, I cut out the top, and then I was able to, I bought a welder to kind of taught myself how to weld, made a charcoal basket, made, you know, stage for the racks, put everything together, bought a dome lid, a, a grill, dome lid and put that on top of the drum fired it up used it it performed flawlessly and i got the brisket the tenderness right i got that right now mind you from the point when i went to austin to the point where i got it right was seven years seven years 
Now again, I wasn't cooking brisket every single day, but I would do a brisket like every month, every two months. And when I say, like I said again, my wife was tired of eating horrible briskets, that's what it was. So by the time I started getting the briskets better, and I started getting them right, I started uh, letting my friends try the brisket. I started letting my friends try the, uh, excuse me, my coworkers try the brisket. And then I got to the point where people were asking me how much it would cost for me to do things, and I kind of pushed it off to the side, didn't really think much of it. <clears throat> but then one of my friends, my friend Travis, he actually brought over a, a rack of baby back ribs, or he brought two racks. Actually, he brought two racks of baby back ribs. And I told him, I said, he said his, his aunt and uncle had bought three racks of baby back cribs. They were gonna do one rack the way that they knew and they wanted me to smoke two racks for them. Well, I told him, I said, in order for me to smoke the racks for you, I need you to buy me a bag of charcoal and I want half of the rack of ribs, okay? He's like, that seems fair. The half a rack of ribs, I let my wife have. In case you don't know, I don't actually eat pork uh, as of late. Medical reasons, we can talk about that later. Nonetheless, I smoked those ribs for him. Once I smoked those ribs for him, the rave, absolute rave reviews I got from his aunt, his uncle, and my buddy Travis pushed me to more or less decide that I might actually want to start charging folks to cook for them. And then the rest is history. My business grew organically, and, I, and like I said, the rest is history. Uh, it is 2018. I officially launched my business in 2004, January of 2000, excuse me, 2014. So I've been at this for four years. Uh, I worked a year and a half full time at it, and then I ended up having to go back to work. So I'm basically in this four years, uh, I went back to work and uh, you know, I do, I do this barbecue business more or less part time at this point. So nonetheless, Hopefully that helps you understand how I how I got to this this point or how I started in doing barbecue. Hopefully it helps. If you have any more questions about this specific topic, please let me know. Leave a comment down below. Thank you as always for watching. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you like what you saw, if you learned something today, please leave me a thumbs up down below. I'll see you next time.